as we remain on our feet, we'll all sing the national anthem. Aquibum State Anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, I would please request that we remain on our feet as I invite the chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Aquibum State, the Reverend Dr. Ndwesa Ekwere, to kindly come up here, sir, and lead us in brief opening prayers. Our dear Father and our God in heaven, the one that has made us and made we ourselves, our Father, we are grateful to you today that you have brought us to be partakers of this good day. We want to thank you, O Lord God Almighty, for what you have continually used your servant to do in this state, even the governor of Akwaibum State, that as you did in those days, you keep selecting people on the face of the people to take charge and to direct. Our Father, you have also directed him to pick people, select them for a time like this and for duties that are necessary for the growth of a quiet boom state. Our Father, we ask to God that we continue to endure him with wisdom and knowledge to do the thing that which uh, you, you called him for. Our Father, we pray that this exercise today will meet the desires of your throne, O God, that these people that are selected to that, that are going to be sworn in, will do only that which you direct them to do. Our Father, we pray that because of this act, this state will continue to prosper. Thank you for beginning this meeting with us and leading us through the exercise that at the end of the day, we shall have cause to thank you. Begin this meeting with us because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. You may please be seated. Your Excellency, the Governor of Aquibum State, our number one citizen, Your Excellency, the wife of the Governor of Aquibum State, Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Aquibum State, the Speaker of the Aquibum State House of Assembly, my Lord, the Chief Judge of Aquibum State are present. We acknowledge the presence of and welcome all the members of the National Assembly who have joined us at this event. And of course, together with members of the Aquibum State House of Assembly, those of them who have come here to be part of this event. Welcome, of course, Secretary to the State Government, Chief of Staff, Head of the Civil Service of Aquibum State, 
We'll take a brief detour from those working for the government of Akwaibo State at this point to welcome also the two-star general of the Nigerian Air Force who is here with us, Air Vice Marshal Mfon Ekpo, Deputy State Chairman of the PDP, Akwaibo State. Welcome the immediate past chairman of the party, commissioners and special advisors here present, chairman of boards, commissions and technical committees, permanent secretaries and heads of extra ministerial departments, the chairman of Algon, Akwaibum State, and all other local government chairmen here present to welcome all of you. We welcome the chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria who prayed for us a, minute, a few minutes ago. His Royal Majesty, the Paramount Ruler of Uyo, local government area, is also here. We welcome you. Welcome all senior citizens and stakeholders in the Aquibum projects who are here. The cross section of Aquibum professionals, captains of industries, especially those who have come under the auspices of Aquibum professionals in Lagos. A good number of them seated here, including two senior advocates of Nigeria. We welcome all of them. We welcome all the commissioners designates and their spouses. Permanent secretaries designates and their spouses, special invited guests, gentlemen of the press, and we're happy to have still with us here the editor of the Vanguard newspapers, Mr. Izia Naba, together with his wife Itoro, our in law, who has been in a quiet and vacation and doesn't look like he wants to go back in a hurry. We welcome you on the condition that these pictures will make the front page, not just of the Vanguard, but of all the national newspapers tomorrow. We welcome all of the family members friends, and the special invited guests who have come. Today, the fourth day of January, 2021, the first working day in the brand new year that it has pleased the Almighty God to give us. We're seated here in this banquet hall for a very important event, the swearing in of five persons, two men and three women, as permanent secretaries, the very height of the profession for those who are in the civil service, and the swearing in of another four persons, one woman and three men, as commissioners to join the Aquibum State Executive Council. Very distinguished, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of COVID protocols that are still in place, but so that we can afford to welcome all of ourselves here. Thankfully, they have not told us that we cannot clap. Can we please put our hands together for ourselves, all of the people that are here. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the Governor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, and with His Excellency's permission, we are going to proceed by taking the swearing in of those to be, um, those who have been appointed and are about to be sworn in as permanent secretaries, five of them. And please, once I call your name, do well to stand. And when you come outside here, as you'll be led out by the protocol officers, the spouses can come and they will show them where to stand, some two steps behind the person to be sworn in. And so, Your Excellency, with your kind permission, I will invite the first on this list, Mr. Ini James Ikie, to please rise. Ikie. Thank you. A native of Ikwe Ikorankun in the local government area of Akwaibum State. The gentleman standing right in front of us attended a PCN school in Ikwe Ikorankun and the government school one in the Kodak Bene. He's an old boy of the Methodist Boys High School, Oran, graduating in 1980 and obtaining his West African Senior School Certificate. He also holds an advanced level IGMB obtained at the School of Basic Studies at Kampa, Crossover State. He obtained a Bachelor of Technology degree in Science Education from the Abuba Katafawa Belewa University, Bauchi State, in the year 1990, and did his National Youth Service at the Boys Secondary School, Urumi, in Edo State. He was appointed into the Kwaibum State Civil Service on the 1st of September 1992 as Educational Officer II. And in the course of his career in the civil service, he served as Secretary in the Traditional Rulers Council. He has been head of Department of Planning, Research, and Statistics at the local education authorities in Ini, Okanafun, and its local education authority. He's head of the personal department in Sunsadatai local government area. He's been education secretary, has been assistant director of sports at the Kwaibum State Universal Basic Education Board. He's been acting director 
the Tinan local government area, and deputy director and was promoted director on the 1st of January 2018. This gentleman who is a Jerusalem pilgrim has attended several courses, including that at the Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, Ascon in Badagri, Lagos. He is married to his wife, Philomena Ine Ikie, and the marriage is blessed with four children. His hobbies include music, sports, and reading. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ini James Ikea. <clears throat> Dr. Ini Jackson Etugudo, please rise. The gentleman standing right in front of us is a medical doctor, a consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist, and an indigenous of of Urugandam local government area of Apoibo State. He was born on the 11th day of April in Ogoja, in the then South Asian State, where he had also his primary education. He was educated at the Tinan Institute of Tinan, and he graduated from the University of Calabar in 1992 with a Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery degree. He had his residency training in obstetrics and gynecology at the University of Lagos Teaching Hospital at Coca in Lagos and became a fellow of the West African College of Surgeons in Dakar, Senegal in the year 2007. Dr. Indy Jackson Etugodos had subspecialty trainings in assisted reproductive technology at the Embryology Academy of Research and Training, Mumbai in India, and the Center for International Education at the Cleveland Clinic, Ohio, United States of America. He has a diploma in minimal access surgery from the Kiel School of Gynecological Endoscopy in Germany. This gentleman has served as medical superintendent of the General Hospital, the Equita Oran, active medical director of the Boom Specialist Hospital, and until his appointment, was the medical superintendent of the General Hospital, Ikodek Bede. He's a devout Christian, married to Mrs. Anthonya in Tugudo. They're blessed with two children, Davida and Esther. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Ini Jackson Tugudo. Mrs. Esther A. Inyang, please rise. A native of Ikhoda Yong Idideb in Ibionibum local government area of Akwaibum State. She's called at the School of Basic Studies in Port Harcourt at the University of Rio, where she obtained a BA degree in English language. She's a seasoned administrator, and the course of her very sterling public service career has worked at different places in the civil service, where she joined in 1994 as an administrative officer. She served as Senior Administrative and Principal Administrative Officer. She's worked at the State Budget Office as a Chief Administrative Officer and Assistant Director of Admin and Supplies, and was Assistant Director of Admin and Supplies at the Kwaibom State Hotels and Tourism Board. She's also been an Assistant Director of the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Welfare, and also at the Hospitals Management Board. She's worked in the Office of the Governor as Director of Administration and Supplies. This thoroughbred civil servant is a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Public Diplomacy and Management, and until very recently was a director in the Kwaibom State Civil Service. Her hobbies include traveling, cooking, and reading. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Esther Anekan Iyang. Mrs. Grace Polydus Jim, please rise. Standing in front of us is a trained midwife, general nurse, psychiatric nurse, health educator, core trainer, and facilitator. Became a registered midwife from the School of Midwifery, Equitable in the year 1988. Registered nurse from the School of Nursing and Midwifery, Codic in 1994. A registered psychiatric nurse at the School of Psychiatric Nursing in Eckert in 2009, holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Health Education from the University of Rio obtained in 2006, and a Master's of Science degree in Community Health also obtained from the University of Rio. In the course of her service, she has worked at the General Hospital Equita, Oran, Mercy Hospital, Abak, General Hospital Ikodek Pane, Psychiatric Hospital Eckert, General Hospital Ikodokuru, and the reproductive health units of the Department of Public Health Services and the Ministry of Health. 
She's a member of the National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives, and also the School Health Educators and Professionals Association of Nigeria. Currently Deputy Director in the Kwaibom State Ministry of Health, she's standing here about to be sworn in as Permanent Secretary. Mrs. Grace Paulinus Jim, please put your hands together for her. Mrs. Abbasie Keme Victor Essien, please stand. A native of Ikore Bere in Ona, local government area of Akwaibum State. She's called at the Ona People's High School from 1975 to 1980. The School of Arts and Science, a year from 1982 to 83. In the university, the then University of Cross River State, now University of Iyo, graduated in 1990, and also at the University of Calabar. She holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in English language, and also a postgraduate diploma in education. She has been employed in the Ministry of Education at Kwaibom State from 1992 till date, and she has some publications, including phonological variations among a Bibio speaking people. And then the senior secondary school students' perception of motivation and the achievement in English language in Calabar municipality. The lady standing right in front of us is about to be sworn in as permanent secretary. Mrs. Abasekeme Victor is here. Please put your hands together for her. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency the Governor will proceed with the administration of the oaths. Your Excellency, please. Your Excellencies. Mr. Speaker, my Lord the Chief Judge, distinguished Akwaibo might I have here with me five permanent secretaries designate, Mr. Ini James Ikie. Rafi, you know I pronounce your phone. Are you Ikie? 100%. Ikie. <laughs> Dr. Ini Jackson Etuguda, Mrs. Esther Niekan Inya, Mrs. Grace Paulinus Jim, Mrs. Abasieke Victor Esien. Oath of Allegiance. I. I. In the James Ikea. Don't move. Don't move ahead of me. <laughs> don't worry. You'll soon be permanent secretary. Just give me ten minutes. You'll be permanent secretary. Don't worry. I. I. In the James Ikea. Do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that, I'll that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance, and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and that I will preserve, and that I will preserve protect, protect and, defend and defend the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help me God. So help me God. Oath of office. I, I, in the do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I'll be faithful, that I'll be faithful, and, faithful and bear true allegiance, and bear true allegiance, allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that as a permanent secretary, that, that as a permanent, permanent secretary in the Akwaibom State Government, in the Akwaibom State Government, I'll discharge my duties, I'll discharge my duties to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, faithfully. Faithfully. And in accordance with the Constitution, and in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the law, and the law, and always in the interest, and always in the interest of the sovereignty of 
integrity, integrity, integrity solidarity, solidarity well-being, well -being, and, prosperity and prosperity of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that I will strive to preserve, that I will strive to preserve the fundamental objectives, the fundamental objectives and directive principles and principles of state policy, of state policy contained, in contained in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that I will not allow my personal interest to influence my official conduct or my official decisions that I will to the best of my ability preserve Protect, protect and define the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That I will abide by the Code of Conduct contained in the fifth schedule to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That in all circumstances, I will do right to all manner of people according to law. Law, without fear or favor, without without fear or favor, favor affection, or ill will, affection or ill will, that I will not directly, that that I will not directly or indirectly, or indirectly communicate, communicate or reveal, or reveal to, any person, to any person any matter, any matter which, which shall be brought under my consideration or shall become known to me, or shall or become known to me as Permanent secretary, as permanent secretary, except as may be required, as as may be required for the discharge of my duties, for the discharge of my duties as, permanent as permanent secretary. So help me God. So help me Can God. we put our hands together for them? Brand new permanent secretaries, Mr. James, in James Ikie. Dr. Ini Jackson Itugudo, Mrs. Esther Anekan Iyan, Mrs. Grace Paulinus Jim, and Mrs. Abasekeme Victor Esen. Congratulations. Your Excellency, at this point, would I um, kindly crave your indulgence to please accept to receive these gentlemen and ladies, newly sworn in permanent secretaries. Mr. and they'll take some individual photographs with His Excellency the Governor. If they lose any other picture in their life, this one will not get missing. Mr. Ini James Ikea. And of course, they'll receive their letters of appointment.
Dr. Ine Jackson Etugudo. Please, since they want to remove the mask to take pictures, when you remove it, please endeavor not to say anything, please. Thank you. Mrs. Esther Nyekan Iyang, please. Mrs. Grace Paulinus Jim. And last but not the least, Mrs. Abasye Keme Victor Esien. Congratulations. Can we please put our hands together for all of them? Thank you very much. We congratulate the new permanent secretaries on getting to the very top of their profession. Your Excellency is very distinguished, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to engage the next gear, and that is to invite four illustrious Akwaibum indigents to be sworn in as commissioners. First, Uko Esien Udum, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Please rise. Mr. Uko Udum, S.A. is a founding partner of the firm of Udum and Udum, legal practitioners. Born on the 11th of April, he attended the Abadina School in Ibadan, and then had a second education at the International School in Ibadan and the Holy Family College, Abak Akwaibum State, where he obtained his West African School Certificate in 1972. He obtained a diploma in company administration at the College of Technology, Calabar, in 1977 before proceeding to study law at the Manchester Metropolitan University in England, where he obtained a Bachelor of Arts degree in law in 1982. He attended the Nigerian Law School and was called to the bar in July 1983 with the famous class of 83. was posted to a law in Quara State for his NYC, where he served in the chambers of a Niagian company, with Chief Bayojo, SAN, as head of chambers. Upon completion of the national service year, Uko and his brother, Esen Udum, another senior advocate of Nigeria, set up the firm of Udum and Udum Legal Practitioners in November 1984. He has since been in active and uninterrupted legal practice. He was admitted into the inner bar, took the silk in the year 2013 to practice as a senior advocate of Nigeria. His areas of professional interest include trial, turn in civil litigation, commercial transaction, cross-border aircraft leasing and financing, aviation litigation, transactional issues in electricity value chain, oil and gas transactions and oil spill litigation, and also commercial arbitration. He's a member of the Nigerian Bar Association, the International Bar Association, the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the United Kingdom, and is a founding member of the Aviation Education Resource and Information for African Lawyers area. This gentleman has offered pro bono services to indigent members of his community and the church in areas of general legal practice, small claims litigation, and others. He has also rendered professional services to Akwaibum State, including representing the state at the all producing communities in Akwaibum at the hearings of the Irikefe panel of inquiry into discontent in all producing communities in 1991, leading to the establishment of UMPADEC as a Marshall Plan for the Development of the Niger Delta. He worked under the leadership of former Governor His Excellency Obong Victor Atta in the preparation of the Memorandum of Akwaibum State to the National Constitutional Conference in 1994-1995. He was part of the legal team defending Akwaibum State in the federal government onshore offshore dichotomy lawsuit at the Supreme Court of Nigeria. He's been a resource person to provide legal resources and research material to facilitate the work of the late Akankangi Bionor in the committee to fashion out political solutions to the onshore-offshore dichotomy question. He's been a resource person and provided legal resources and research material for the delegates to the Niger Delta State during the National Conference of 2014. 
is a founding member and currently General Secretary of the Concerned Aquivalent Professionals in Lagos. Married to Eme Udum. They have three children. His hobbies include listening to jazz music, poetry, and Christian literature. He's a keen golfer, an occasional tennis player, and a life supporter of both Arsenal Football Club and Aqua United Football Club. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Uko Esien Udum, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Please put your hands together for him. I wouldn't know if it's only Arsenal fans who clapped for him, but um, <laughs> considering that Arsenal have been doing well recently, they can afford to clap. If that was read four weeks ago. <laughs> Mrs. Idongasit Iboro, Etebet, please rise. Are these also Arsenal fans? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Standing in front of us, Mrs. Idonga Sidi Tibet, obtained a first school living certificate and GCE from Central School and Insert People's Grammar School, Budina Farafia, in the local government area. In the year 1987, she backed a Bachelor of Arts degree in English and Education from the University of Calabar. And she also holds an MBA in Banking and Finance from the University of Science and Technology, Port Harcourt River State. She has attended and obtained several certifications in leadership, including the Certificate in Decision-Making Strategies for leaders from the London Business School. She has attended the Harvard Business School Certification on Strategic Leadership, and the Lagos Business School, and the Executive Program on Leading and Inspiring Change from the Emory University in Atlanta, United States of America. She's a career woman in the banking sector with over 30 years of cognate experience in the corporate world, 20 of those spent working in the banking sector. In the year 1988, during NYC, she took a plunge and was on the staff of the Shell Petroleum Development Company and served there for about a year, and after then was retained by that organization. She also worked as procurement officer for the West African Glass Company, and later joined the first bank, Merchant Bankers, where she worked different roles from relationship manager Human Resources Department to becoming Senior Executive Assistant between 1991 and 1997. She joined Zenit Bank PLC in 1997 as Assistant Manager in the Oil and Gas Department at the Ikoi branch of the bank in Lagos. Through this, her very affable personality and drive for excellence, she served the bank in different capacities, being Assistant Manager, Deputy Manager, and rising to become Group Zonal Head of the Ikui and Victoria Island Zones of Zenith Bank. In the year 2015, she was appointed Senior Special Assistant to the Governor of Aquibom State on Educational Monitoring. She's a Fellow of the, Ch of the Chartered Institute of Finance and Control of Nigeria, a Fellow of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, a Fellow of the Chartered Institute of Economics, a member of the Nigeria Institute of Management Chartered, a registered teacher with the Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria. Beyond her professional affiliation, she's also a member and founder of several political and social cultural groups. She's the founder of Divine Imbo Movement, a member of Bogum Parawai Bibu, the woman leader of the Mandate Preservation Group, and the founder of Peace Movement Women Political Group. She has won several awards, including in the course of her career, winning the MD CEO of the award in the bank where she worked for over eight times. She has been best team player, she won the Manager of the Year in the Fastest Growing Bunch, Best Staff in Income Generation Capacity, among several other awards in the course of her life. She has also been recognized by the Inen Clan Council of Chiefs in Orugonam local government area where she comes from, and very recently was made Obama Wanufuro Mosongo Ibunda in Uran just a few days ago. Your Excellency, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the lady is married to her husband, engineer Iboro Etiabet, and that marriage is blessed with three children. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, your excellences, Mrs. Idongasit Iboro Etiabet.
Thank you. Dr. John James Etim, please rise. Born in March, he attended the St. Catrick's St. Catherine's Primary School in Manoran, where he obtained his first school living certificate. He thereafter attended the Holy Trinity College in Biakong, Randokogamene River, Kwaibom State, and obtained his West African Senior School Certificate in the year 1977. He completed a HND in Business Administration at the Polytechnic Calabar, and also attended the University of Calabar and obtained a PGD in Public Administration. He holds two master's degrees in criminal justice and in public administration, both from the Widener University, Chester, Pennsylvania, United States of America. And just this, uh, last year, 2020, he backed the Doctor of Literature in Public Administration from the American Trinity University, Moreno, United States of America. Between 1985 and 1991, Dr. Item served as a classroom teacher with the government of Aquaibum State before relocating to the United States of America where he worked with the City of Philadelphia Department of Human Services between 1994 and 2006, and a social, case, social work case manager and specialist and budget manager, respectively. From 2006, he worked as the real property evaluator for the City of Philadelphia Office of Property Assessment. He's a member of several professional bodies, including the American Society of Criminology, the American Society of Public Finance, and several other organizations. He's been inducted into the international body of who is who in professional management in the year 1998. This son of Anwafot Uyo, local government area of Akwaibom State, is standing right here to be sworn in as Honorable Commissioner. Dr. John James Etum, please put your hands together for him. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the gentleman who I have just called to stand right in front of us, in the years that he has spent in the United States of America, has actually maintained very strong roots with Akwaibom State. For a very long time, he was the president and leader of the of Fort Ukwa Association in the United States of America, and also served all the Akwaibom citizens in the United States of America for four years as the president of the Akwaibom State Association in America, Akisan. So even when he left to America, he did not leave a Kwaibom state behind. Please put your hands together for him one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Last but not the least, Pastor Umo Eno, please rise. Your Excellency, I was looking through his resume to see if he's an Arsenal fan also. <laughs> Umo Basi Eno is a native of Ikorek Benudo in Sudubium, local government area of Akwaibom State. He was born in Enugu, and his father was a police officer and his mother was a merchandiser. He attended the local government authority primary school in Lagos and schooled at the St. Francis Secondary School, Ikorataku, in Eket before returning to Victory High School, Lagos, to complete his secondary education and obtain the West African School Certificate. He's a graduate of the University of EU with a Bachelor of Science degree in Political Science and Public Administration, and also a Master's of Science degree in Public Administration. He's currently writing his thesis for an award of the PhD from the University of EU. Pastor Omoino is a visionary entrepreneur and a bivocational pastor. He spent his early years as a workman holding several positions. He worked with Union Bank PLC as banking officer in the Business Advisor and Financial Planning Department between 1982 and 1990. He later joined Norman Investment Limited between 1991 and 1997, where he distinguished himself as a man of excellence and touring integrity. He developed a financial roadmap and increased revenue generation in the seed company, achieving a growth rate from 5% to 15% annually. He rose through the ranks from the finance and investment manager to becoming general manager and then to group general manager of the holding group, Norman Holdings Limited. 
In the year 1997, he established Royalty Hotels and Recreation Limited from a humble beginning of just about five rooms and gradually evolved the business into a group of hospitality and allied service providers, which has become one of the leading brands in the hospitality industry in Akwaibom City, Nigeria. The operations of the group entails hotels, apartments, eateries, and coffee shops, industrial catering, and even the production of the popular Aquafresh premium table water. Collectively, the business group effectively provides employment opportunities to over 2,500 persons across the country, 80% of whom are indigents of Akwaibom State. In the year 2004, he was appointed by then Governor Bongata as chairman of the Akwaibom State Hotels and Tourism Management Board and he brought his excellence to bear in the three years that he held that position, publishing the first ever hotels and tourism directory for travelers and tourists, among several other achievements. His second foray into public service was in September 2019, when His Excellency Mr. Domi Manuel, Governor of Aquaibum State, appointed him as Executive Director, Agricultural Investment in the Aquaibum State Investment Corporation, Archicorp. The gentleman is an ordained apostle in the body of Christ and the under-shepherd of the All Nations Christian Ministry International, a thriving Christian ministry with over 3,000 faithful spread within and outside the state. He's a well sought after speaker, multiple award winner, and member of several professional bodies, including being fellow of the Nigerian Hotels and Catering Institute, a two-time Paul Harris fellow of the Rotary Club International, and alumnus of the Pan-African University, the Lagos Business School. Is an author of several books, the latest being World Creation, God's Way, amongst others. His story is an inspiration to many people, having spent 28 years in the private sector as an experienced turnaround manager. He's an expert in developing sustainable business processes. Married to Pastor Mrs. Prishans Enoch, his lovely wife has been his great supporter, encourager, and cheerleader for 34 uninterrupted years. The marriage is blessed with admirable children and several grandchildren for whom he remains a standard and worthy example. Pastor Umo Basi Eno. Please put your hands together for him. At this point, we will most respectfully invite His Excellency the Governor to proceed administering the oath to the fans of Arsenal and Aqua United Football Clubs. <laughs> Your Excellencies, Mr. Speaker, my Lord the Chief Judge, distinguished senators, stakeholders, leaders of Aquaibum State, I have here before me four commissioners designate. I think the resumes speak for itself, so they don't need introduction. I discovered you would not clap much for Akisan president. After they've crucified me that I must bring in diaspora, can you clap for Akisan president? Else you will not enter America. Don't clap, you won't enter America. <laughs> Oath of allegiance. I, I, I do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I'll be faithful. That I'll be faithful and bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. To the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that I will preserve. And that I will preserve and protect. Protect and defend, and defend the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help me God. So help me God. Oath of office. When you get to that as put the honorable commissioner. I, I in Kingdom, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I'll be faithful. That I'll be faithful and bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. To the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That as that as honorable commissioner, 
in the Akwaibom State Government, in the Akwaibom State Government, State Government. I'll discharge my duties. I will discharge my duties to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, faithfully, faithfully, and in accordance with the Constitution, and in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and the law, and the law, and always in the interest, and always in the interest of the sovereignty, of the sovereignty, integrity, integrity, solidarity, solidarity, well-being, well-being, and prosperity, and prosperity of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That I'll strive to preserve, that I will strive to preserve the fundamental objectives, the fundamental objectives and directive principles, and directive principles of state policy, of state policy contained in the constitution, contained in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That I will not allow my personal interest, that I will not allow my personal interest to influence my official conduct, to influence my official conduct, or my official decisions, or my official decisions. That I will, to the best of my ability, that I will, to the best of my ability, preserve, preserve, protect, protect, and defend, and defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The constitution of the Federal. Republic of Nigeria. That I will abide, that I will abide by the code of conduct, by the code of conduct contained in the fifth schedule for the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That in all circumstances, that in all circumstances I will do right to all manner of people according to law. According to law, without fear of favor, without fear of favor, affection or ill will, affection or ill will, that I will not directly, that, that I will not directly or indirectly, or indirectly communicate, communicate or, reveal or reveal to any person, to any, person any, matter any matter which shall be brought under my consideration, which shall be brought under my consideration, or shall be made known to me as honorable commissioner. Or shall be made known to me as honorable commissioner, except as may be required, except as may be required, for the due discharge of my duties, for the due discharge of my duties, as honorable commissioner, as honorable commissioner. So help me God. So help me God. Five star Aquaibum citizens joining the Aquaibum City Executive Council as commissioners. Can we please give them a five-star round of applause? Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, very appropriate that on the first walking day of a brand new year, we have fresh blood, an injection of fresh ideas, an injection of um, fresh talent, even as the journey to the completion agenda of His Excellency keeps going on a canter. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, We'll invite for the presentation of letters of appointment and the congratulatory handshake from His Excellency Uko Esen Udum, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Please put your hands together for him. From a Tinan local government area, we'll invite Idong Asit Iboro Etiabet from Uruganam local government area. We'll invite John James Etim from Uyo local government area. And last but not the least, we'll invite 
Umo Basi Eno from Nsurubium, local government area. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, can we please put our hands together for His Excellency the Governor of Kwaibum State. Thank you very much. We congratulate all the newly sworn in permanent secretaries and commissioners and ask that we all take our seats at this point and listen to the remarks which will be made by His Excellency the Governor as we begin to bring this event to a close. And so may I most respectfully invite to speak on this occasion our governor, our number one citizen, Mr. Udum Imano. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Please shall we be seated. Your Excellency, the First Lady, Mrs. Mata Udom Emmanuel, Your Excellency the Deputy Governor, Honorable Speaker, Kwaibom State House of Assembly, My Lord, the Chief Judge of Kwaibom State, Distinguished Senators, Members of the National Assembly that are here, the Deputy Speaker and Members of the Kwaibom House of Assembly, Secretary to the State Government, Chief of Staff, Head of the Civil Service, our Deputy Chairman of PDP, Immediate Past Chairman of PDP, the entire PDP family, I think I've seen the Secretary, the Deputy DG Divine Mandate, Honorable Commissioners, especially the newly sworn in Commissioners, Special Advisors and their spouses, the Service Commanders that are here, the Chairman Khan, the Paramount Ruler of Uyo and our Royal Fathers, Captains of Industry that are here. So many. I've seen a whole lot of them. Professionals in Lagos and Abuja. Members of Akisa, both in Europe and America that are here. Fathers of Faith, Chairman of Boards and Commissions, Algon Chairman, Chairman of Local Government uh, Areas Council, Permanent Secretaries, Heads of Interministerial Departments, Technical Committee Chairman, especially all the newly sworn in Permanent Secretaries, all our senior citizens, especially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me, first of all, appreciate God for allowing us to see the first work day in 2021. I know as a state we had a solemn assembly on Saturday and we all thank God for bringing all of us into 2021. I also recognize the latest two-star Air Force General, Air Vice Marshal Ekbo, and all those other generals in the house. While we thank God, we had to, I made an announcement that we should know as a people we've lost time last year, seriously. I think as a people, we lost over eight months last year due to COVID-19 and all other issues. And that we need to stimulate the economy as soon as possible and start this year with all amount of seriousness. When I did the last swearing in of commissioners, I said that we are on a journey. And if you listen to the oath of office, I say I will not allow my personal interest to conflict with what God put me to do for the state. So whatsoever we are doing is in the best interest of this state. And I really thank God, starting with the permanent secretaries. I ask all of them. Uh, they had to be interviewed on January 1, New Year Day. Immediately they finished their New Year Pandayam. They were with me from 9.30 p.m. There were many of them, so many. I think five married. And I ask all of them, whether any of them has my phone number, none of them. So many of them had never seen me before. They, so many of them did not even know they were coming for interview. Just 
to reinstate what we are saying. Please, if you so much appreciate that director, don't lobby for permanent secretary. I keep saying so. They will tell you. They didn't even know we were going to make permanent secretaries. They just merited, and today they are here as permanent secretaries. Without any element of bias, in fact, as you're leaving me, you know whether you married or not. So if they come and tell you, oh, the governor just is a lie. You know one thing about school? If you go to school and you came out in third class or with third class, then they ask you, ah, what did you pass with? They say they gave me third class. If it's 2-2, two, two, they gave me 2-2. Two, two. But if it's 2-1, I got 2-1. If it's first class, I made first class. So if they come out to tell you or if they've ever mentioned to you, the governor failed me. The governor does not fail anybody you must also defend that position. Permanent secretary is not a joke. That's the highest level of that career. So you must justify. Gone are the days that you just sit down, you just get a letter to be a permanent secretary. I must interview you to be a permanent secretary to make sure that you key in to where we are going as a state and as a people. So I want to say congratulations to all the permanent secretaries who married and for those who could not make it in the last interview, you know, God will always give human beings a second chance. So you will always have a second chance because many people are retiring and we are making more. So please, just brush up and make sure that we're in 21st century. We can't make a permanent secretary that looks like a 19th century permanent secretary. You must be a 21st century permanent secretary to qualify. So I'm sorry, my personal interest cannot conflict there. So we must pick the best for the state. If we must achieve and reach the goal that we're going to. So I just believe permanent secretaries will work seriously towards the completion agenda. If you look at our completion agenda, nothing to do with the governor, nothing to do with an individual, but something to do or to do with 7.2 million aquabomites. So we expect that we're all keen and work seriously and make sure as we make our bed as a people, that's how we rely on it. We cannot rely on any other person to come and make a quibble for us. We must make a quibble what we want a quibble to be. So there's no point. Um, I made an announcement, I think, on 1st of January that we are going to see how we are going to stimulate the economy within the first month with minimum of 50 billion. People were asking me, where are you going to get it? Uh, well, that goes to also buttress the next comment I was going to, I mean, I'm going to make. As commissioners, be rest assured, they are going to call you names, whether you like it or not. When I came in, there's no name they didn't call me. Political neophyte. Uh, who brought this one from Lagos? But now, that exposure, people forget that your vision is limited to your exposure. And that the reason we need to be exposed as a Kwaibon people is that so that we can bring back something home. I was talking to somebody yesterday. They said, oh, your excellency, you want to stimulate the economy. How are you going to do it? I said, that's the benefit of the exposure of the people that we related with outside. And that's where we need to also come back to build our states. So for commissioners, please, you have a major task, a critical time you are joining us on the completion agenda. And we're not joking about it. If we don't lay a proper economic foundation for our state now, once we derail, I don't know, we would have gone a lot backwards. You can see a whole lot of things we are doing to make sure we set up a proper economic foundation for the state. So it's a call to duty. It's a call that we must serve our people. God endowed you with that wisdom. God made, gave you all those connections. Anybody who listens to all your resumes cannot fault a single one. I keep giving an example of the advert of a live boy. They say, beat this if you can. So all your resumes are for the interests of Aquaibon people. That's why God put you there. So please, we're all here to serve our state and make sure we make the light of this state shine all over the world as a state, the only state on planet Earth named after God. So we can't just sit back and behave like any other state. We must try to do a whole lot for ourselves. So be ready. You'll be misconstrued. You'll be misunderstood. I keep saying so. You'll be misquoted uh, all the time. So you, you can't allow that to distract you one bit. Yesterday, Sunday, I was in my office. Uh, somebody just reported to me how one associate professor said, how he came to me. He said he wanted to work to me, for me. I told him, no, he should go and continue with his medical line. And I'm telling the person, can you call that person? 
I've, somebody I've never known, I've never seen, I'm sure the person had never met me one-on-one. -on -one. I said, call this person. Let's also prove a point. So that when people come back to you, you know that 99.99% of what people say that are negative are all lies. By the time they call this man, this man had never seen me before. He doesn't even know, he, he, I've never known him before. But that's what he told somebody. How he came to me, I refused to allow him to work with me. I told him to go and continue with his medical line. I would have made him a commissioner for health. Somebody I've not known, I've not seen before. So, once you're in public service, be ready. People will say a whole lot of things, but you stay focused and you can't, that can't distract you. You are not the first person. It started right from Genesis. Go and check with Moses. I keep saying so. Up to Revelation. There's no how. People will be there. But I also want to say here, service. I said this when we saw in the last batch of commissioners. If you check the Acts of the Apostle, when several deacons were appointed, all of them dropped back. Only two that we still hear the names. Stephen and Philip. All others, nobody heard the name again. You come back to Old Testament. How come among all the women that serve in the Old Testament, only two women that they, uh, they name a book after? Ruth and Esther. Check what made Ruth who she was. Ruth wasn't even on the tribe that should have been named in Matthew under the general of Jesus Christ. Ruth was a Moabite. She wasn't even qualified to be named alongside the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. But what did she do? She followed Naomi. She served diligently, passionately, without looking backwards. It was service that took her to join in the genealogy of Jesus Christ that is men mentioned in Matthew chapter 1. So service, God actually looks at service in a very serious manner. There's no how you serve. You must serve diligently and we will all be accounted for. Uh, yesterday, uh, the guy that preached in the church said something, how he got to know that God will also judge him for what he has and he did not impart others. So God will not only judge you based on what you do, but what you could have used for other people which you did not use. God will also judge you because he endowed you with those things. All of us will say, whatsoever I have, it was by the grace. So, it doesn't, when it comes to saving people, it doesn't matter your position, your money, nothing at all. You must save people diligently as if you are doing. Not, it's not even as if. Knowing fully well that what you are doing, you are also serving God. So every position, everything we are appointed to do, we must serve diligently with all amount of sincerity. Forget about criticisms. Everybody can never say everything good about you. People will lie against you, but that does not matter. Let your conscience bear witness to what you're doing for your people. And um, our diaspora man, welcome. Over time, whenever I appear on radio, acribomites in Europe, in America, they attack me a lot. That we don't look into acribomites in diaspora. So I gave them a commitment last year that before long, we're going to also give them chance. You know, the people that can criticize you most are people in diaspora. Because over there, they don't experience uh, blackout. Once they open the tap, the tap is running. Uh, welcome to reality. So, <laughs> welcome to reality. Uh, when you lie down and uh, even though you've paid for light, you can't still get that light. So, welcome to reality. So, we also had to create an opportunity because, you see, Aquibum is for everybody. Aquibum is for everybody. We had to create that opportunity. Let people in diaspora also bring their exposure, their vision, and then let's, let's work together. I mean, Aquibum belongs to everybody. Whatsoever you have, bring it back. So that's why we had to, okay, give us person. They now had to wholeheartedly uh, nominate the former president of Akisan, I think for how many years? Four years. Uh, to also come on board and bring his international exposure. I hope the money in America you will set aside. They can also give us some as well because we also need that money. That part of money Trump did not use in fighting COVID. Bring it. We'll use it here. So we now had to really, really open up the space because the completion agenda is critical to where we are going as a people. So it's a very critical time they are joining us and we hope and pray that all of them, God will actually give them that wisdom and the strength for them to actually contribute. I also said so, whenever you hear a commissioner complaining on the street, he lacks creativity. He lacks creativity. 
totally lacks creativity. It's not it has nothing to do with governor. There is um, a guy I don't want to mention his name who troubled me so much for appointment. I gave him an office as chief executive. As at the last time I checked last week, people in that office could not even remember the last time he reported for work. So, but when that person sees you outside, ah, governor, he's in the office. Governor, he's sitting on your table. He's just sitting on ideas. People, I mean, the whole world is run by ideas and creativity. Not for you just after getting appointment, you go and lie at home. Maintaining the status quo. If you keep doing the same thing that others have been doing over time, you keep getting the same result. So there's time for paradigm shifts. We need to also have understand what are the critical success factors. In a critical time like this, things will continue to change. I keep saying so. Year 2020 is gone with history. We can never recover. No matter how what we do, year 2020 is gone. So we need people to move ahead. What if 2021 comes out to even be worse than 2020? Are we going to give excuse? But God forbid, it can never be. But we must forge ahead as a people. You see, when you now manage situations in tough times, that's when people now acknowledge what God has put in you. Not when you just coast, when, no, not at all. So we must, God also prepared people to actually manage situations in tough times. So it doesn't matter the times we are. We can't be giving excuses. You will never hear me carry a microphone just be giving excuses. No. We are not meant to be giving excuses. We are meant to provide solutions because that's what you are created for as a leader. I believe with the crop of commissioners, permanent secretaries, and all other appointees that we have, joining with our stakeholders who are backing us and the fathers in faith who are praying for us, we should be able not to manage change in our Bible. Our duty is to create change. Let's allow those who do not have creativity to manage change. We are in our we will continue to create change. Thank you and God bless you all. Can we please put our hands together for His Excellency one more time? Thank you. Please, we'll quickly invite the newly sworn in commissioners to kindly join His Excellency for a group photograph up here, please. The commissioners first, and then the permanent secretaries. Two sets of photographs, please. Thank you very much. Up here, please come up, please come. It doesn't matter what order, it doesn't matter what order. Up, up, sir, up, sir. Thank you very much. No, no. People are removing their face masks because this picture will live longer than COVID. They don't want to have too many explanations to make. You take your exits to the opposite side of where you came from so that the permanent secretaries can also have their chance for this group photograph. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. The permanent secretaries, the two men will stand at the extremes and will let the ladies take their positions in the... Please, you may wish to spread out a little bit. Thank you. Congratulations. We want to congratulate. Please, can we let them return to their seats, please? We want to congratulate all the newly sworn in permanent secretaries and commissioners. Welcome them to the completion agenda team. Wish them all of the very best. Thank the people of Aquaibum State for their unwavering support to the administration of His Excellency the Governor. 
and thank all of us for the support that we are going to extend to these our brothers and sisters so that they can succeed in their chosen assignment. It is the first working day of the brand new year, 2021. While wishing everyone here a happy new year, we also wish that we do the very best we can this year. And in the course of our work in 2021, always remember that whether you think you can or you think you cannot, you are right. Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, having come to the end of this event, may I please request that one more time we rise for the national anthem. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have yourself a beautiful day ahead. God bless you.